Living Power with Dan Hurd. The third misuse is communicating skepticism toward one's... I'm kind of mean today, aren't I? <laughs> the third misuse is communicating skepticism towards one's teachers. You know, it's just like, uh, yeah, I know they're, they're good at this, but you know, they're not so good at this, you know. And they become skeptical, and uh, I don't know if that person really is qualified. Misusing, uh, misuse of the gift is to uh, be become skeptical towards one's teachers. The fourth misuse is criticizing sound teaching because of technical flaws. <laughs> if that was the case, I would be dead in the water. Because there are no technical flaw, uh, 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 strengths in what I do. I, in fact, there's a give a point right there. I stumbled and misused the wrong, the wrong words. And uh, that's, if you, if you base my teaching on technical, technicality, we're in trouble. Uh, because I'm not technically adept. But a, a teacher can misuse that and, and criticize other people because of technical flaws. Don't do that. Uh, another uh, misuse is depending on human reasoning rather than on the Holy Spirit's teaching. teaching. Depending on human reasoning. This was logic. Let me teach it from a logical standpoint. Rather than letting the Holy Spirit be the one who teaches and affirms something. It's so important that we understand that not only as teachers but as receivers of the teaching. That it means nothing unless the Holy Spirit gives it and interprets it. Anything that I say must be received and interpreted according to the power of the Holy Spirit. If you take, if you take it at my word, you're missing it. But if you let the Holy Spirit take it and apply it in your life, then it's validated. That's the way it needs to be. A teacher who just simply starts depending on human reasoning rather than on the Holy Spirit's work is misusing your gift. The sixth misuse is giving information which lacks practical applications. This is probably one of the biggest failures of teachers in the church today. I've written a book about it. I just feel like as, as teachers that if we don't take the Word of God and teach the application, then what is the point? If you can't take the Word of God and apply it in your life, then what is the point? God gave us His Word so that we could apply it in our lives. And a teacher who fails to do that is missing the point. Another uh, uh, misuse of, of the gift of teaching is boring listeners with details of research. You know, let's get into how I discovered this. Let me show you how I discovered this wonderful truth. Just give me the truth and shut up. You know, I mean, it's, I don't care about the details. Give me the research. Let me know the truth. Another misuse is retreating into one's world of books. I will tell you that that, that, that really was kind of an issue in my life at one time. I had a huge, you still do I guess, it's all in boxes now, but I had a huge library, very large library, and I would spend a lot of time in my books. Books were important to me. Studying was important to me. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget when, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly when it was. It was, I think it was when, when I left the ministry down in Florida and moved back up here. We had nowhere to put the books. And I thought I was going to have to give up my books because, there were, I mean, there was just boxes. I mean, they would have filled this entire area here with uh, boxes of books. And I thought I was going to have to give them up. And I was sick. I mean, even to the point where I wept. I mean, I was just a baby about it. I can't give up my books. You know, my books are so important. You know, and it was just like the most, you know, it was like so important to me that I had my books. It was like, like a crutch almost. And then as, as, as God brought me through that, I began to realize Maybe that, maybe I'm wasting an awful lot of time that I shouldn't be devoting to just reading books, these, these study books and so on and so on. And that's a danger, that's a misuse, You're just re retreating into your own world of books and study. Let me uh, give you a couple of final thoughts on teaching before we get into encouragement. Uh, teaching, uh, Titus was also a teacher in the book of, uh, in, in the New Testament. If you will read the, the, uh, the letter of Titus, you will find an amazing letter for teachers. That's what Titus is. Titus is a letter for teachers. And if you'll read Titus and the instructions that are given to him as a teacher, you'll see some amazing things that, uh, that are given to teachers. For example, in Titus chapter 2, verse 1, you must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. That was the, the commission that was given to him. And then Titus 2.15, which, by the way, sets up the third chapter of Titus. Titus 2.15 says this. These then, 
talking about the things that is setting up in, in the third chapter. These then are the things you should teach, encourage, and rebuke with all authority. Don't let anyone despise you. That's that's Titus is uh, was a teacher, and the letter to Titus is an instruction on teaching. James three, I love what James three says for teachers. James three says it this way: Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers. Because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Yikes. You see the pressure that's on a teacher? A teacher realize, a teacher should realize this. A teacher is going to be judged more strictly by the Lord. Going to be held accountable by the Lord because of what they teach and because of their responsibility to teach. So that's the teacher. That's those are the characteristics of the misuse.